Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about the best way to prevent infections when you're going through breast cancer treatment. I'm going to specifically be referring to chemotherapy. Maybe I'll start though with surgery um, and I'll cover how to avoid getting an infection as much as possible. A lot of this is actually out of your hands, but starting with surgery, when you go through surgery, the, the operating room is a sterile environment, sterile to the greatest extent possible. Everybody in the operating room scrubs in. So that means that they have to wash for a prolonged period of time with a type of soap that kills infections and they have to clean under their nails and clean their hands with a special brush. It's quite an arduous procedure. And then when they go into the operating room or right before they go in, they will put on a sterile gown. They'll wear a cap to cover their hair. It might be a soft fabric cap or it might be a fabric, a more sturdy fabric cap. Both well, are effective. Shoe coverings, really every part of the body that comes close to yours will be sterilized. Masking, of course, is required so that the operative area remains clean. Everything above the waist has to be sterile, above the height of the table, which is about waist height. And instruments are sterilized at very high heat and then handed to the person who will be using the instrument, usually the surgeon, another surgeon, or the scrub nurse, using sterile technique. So you've done your part, you're, you're ready to go. What do you need to do? Really nothing. You don't actually have to shower specially or clean your skin specially. All of that is done in the operating room and that field is kept sterile the entire time. Your hair will most likely be also put in a cap so that uh, hair doesn't fall into the surgical field. Most surgeons have to take off jewelry if they're wearing it. For example, everything is kept really clean. After surgery, your incision or incisions will be applied, a sterile dressing will be applied and that will be changed. You will be taught how to do that, but also a home health care nurse will be likely coming in for the first couple of days. And it's really important to keep that area clean. So you don't want to be lifting up the dressing and poking at the area, for example, which a lot of people want to do, you know, what does this feel like? And actually, if you have pain or redness or heat in the area, we will ask you to let us know, does it feel hot? So you'll usually feel with the back of the clean hand, the area around the incisions to be able to answer your physician's questions about the area, should you have pain or swelling. So just make sure you wash your hands really carefully. You don't need sterile gloves uh, because the wound has been closed. The incision has been closed sterilely. It's really hard to introduce bacteria into the wound. If you have a drain, these are very soft, flexible drains to drain the fluid that will accumulate in the area where the tumor or lymph nodes were, it's possible for that area to get infected. So keep a close eye on the breast and call, even if you think it's not a problem. If you have pain, redness, swelling, or drainage that doesn't look clear, that's the time to call the doctor and you should feel free to call the doctor on call at night. You don't want to wait for a long time. If you develop a fever or chills, that's a medical emergency. And if you can't reach your doctor in a timely fashion, it's a good idea to go to urgent care or even better, the emergency room. So I've covered infection after surgery. I'm going to talk about preventing your risk of infection when you're on chemotherapy. So most chemotherapy lowers your white cell counts. It doesn't lower every type of white cells count, but it will lower one particular kind, which is the neutrophil line. I would direct you to our video on this because it can be really helpful. Neutrophils fight bacteria. You're actually not at greater risk when you're on breast cancer chemotherapy for infections with viruses or infection with fungus. Kind of interesting to know. So if your friends and family all have a cold or a cough, you are not at greater risk of getting a viral infection. So why do we tell you to stay away from crowds? 
The reason is because if you get a fever from a virus, we don't know what it's from. And we, as your healthcare team, will worry it's from bacteria. And so what that means is a lot of fuss. So we send you to get your counts checked and we send you to, we have you come in to see us to see if you're having a fever. There's a lot of extra monitoring and sort of extra work for you, even if it ends up just being a virus. So that's why we want you to stay away from crowds and stay away from people who have a cold or another viral syndrome. Let's talk about bacterial infections. Where do you get them from? That's not usually something we catch from one another. The bacteria that can give you an infection are actually in your own body. So we have good bacteria all the way from our mouth to our anus. Really good bacteria to keep the fungus and yeast at bay and keep us healthy. Vitamins are made by bacteria in the gut, for example. So it's really important not to view the bacteria in your body as your enemy. When does it become a problem? Well, it becomes a problem if there's a breach of the boundary between the mucous membranes and the skin and the bloodstream. What do I mean by that? So those bacteria that stay in your gut, we want them to stay in the gut. We don't want them to get in the bloodstream and we don't want bacteria to get into the skin. It's really unlikely for bacteria that are in your digestive system to get into the skin unless you lick your fingers and then touch an area of the skin that has an opening. And it's really not that uncommon to do that, believe it or not. You know, we, we lick our finger to get something dirty off of our face. If that were to get into a break in the skin around the port, for example, you could see how that could happen. It's not the most common cause of infections, but it's something you can control and be mindful of. So wash your hands between touching your mouth and certainly after using the toilet, you'll want to make sure that your hands are really clean. And one way to remember how often to wash them, it, or for how long to wash them, is to sing happy birthday twice, or if you have a timer, if you have a watch, you can set a timer for 20 seconds. But you want to make sure that you're washing both this side, the palm side, and the back of the hand side, especially under the nails, which are an area that trap germs really easily, and in between our fingers. So you don't need to use special antimicrobial soap. You want to use just regular hand soap, wash for 20 seconds, and then when you're done washing, dry really carefully. You don't want to get breaks in the skin through which bacteria or other germs can enter. So how are other ways in which the bloodstream can get affected by the bacteria in the gut? Well, we know we've got the bacteria in our mouth. Again, these are all really good bacteria. But if you floss and you get, um, you see blood in the saliva when you spit, every time we floss, we can introduce, again, good bacteria into the bloodstream. So you'll want to use a very soft toothbrush, and you actually don't want to avoid flossing, but you want to floss very gently. And if you're watching this before you start chemotherapy, or if you're watching this on behalf of somebody who will be getting chemotherapy, make sure that people get to the dentist and get really good gum health. We, again, don't want to stop um, brushing and flossing, even though you think, oh, that could introduce bacteria into the bloodstream. It's actually infected gums that become the big problem. So check with your dentist, ask about the health of your gums, and ask about safe ways to help improve your gum health while you're receiving chemotherapy. The other thing that can happen is bacteria can pass from our guts into our bloodstream, especially if we have mucositis. If you have mucositis or inflammation of the mucous membranes in the mouth, it's very likely that you have inflammation of the gut lining. And that's how we can get bacteria into the bloodstream. There is not a lot you can do about this. You can't sterilize your gut, and in fact, you don't want to. Remember, those good bacteria keep yeast infections away, and that's a lot harder to treat than bacterial infections. But I did want to explain how it happens that bacteria can get into our bloodstream. And again, there's not a lot you can do about this. If you find you're constipated, you'll want to make sure that you 
soften the stool so that you're not straining and having bleeding when you have a bowel movement. So work with your medical team. You may get constipated with chemotherapy. You may have diarrhea. And both of those are probably how um, bacteria get into the bloodstream. So you'll want to make sure that you talk with your team about managing diarrhea and constipation. You can use things like witch hazel pads, one brand name is Tux, to keep the anal area very clean. And uh, there's not extra you need to do. You don't want to douche using vaginal douches. Um, actually flushes out the good bacteria, so you don't want to be doing that. Some people say to avoid tampons during your periods, um, but that's not generally a way in which bacteria are introduced into the bloodstream. And if you are finding that you're having mucositis of the vaginal tissue, pads can be really hard for you. You could think about something like a cup which won't cause um, erosion of the skin or irritation of the skin during your periods, if you're having periods while you're on chemotherapy. I've covered a lot. I've covered um, how to uh, take care of your skin after surgery and the area of the drain when to call. With uh, chemotherapy, just as with surgery, if you develop a fever, or shakes you want to call if it's a medical emergency. It's probably the one your doctors worry about the most. Your doctors, nurses, pharmacists, the rest of your medical team worry about the most. It's actually developing bacteria in the bloodstream when your counts are low. In terms of what not to put into your body, just wash your food really carefully, wash your hands really carefully. Um, some people will say you need to cook your vegetables, but I think if you're getting even raw vegetables and you wash them really carefully, you should be able to enjoy raw vegetables. And the other thing to remember is that your counts are not low, your white cell counts are not low the whole time during chemotherapy. I'm doing this because if your treatments are three weeks apart, it's during the middle that your counts will be the lowest and then they start coming back up really quickly. If you're on growth factor shots, uh, watch our video about growth factor. Uh, that shortens the amount of time that you're in that little swoopy cycle that your blood counts are low and it also doesn't let them go as low, so that's the benefit of growth factor. If you are curious about whether chemotherapy is part of your treatment plan, whether you'll be getting growth factor shots, what to expect, don't forget to visit yerba.com for your personalized report. And if this video has been helpful, click like and subscribe, that will help other uh, YouTube uh, viewers find this video, which can help people just like you learn about this very topic. And if you have a question or a comment for us, just drop it below and we will get back to you usually within a week to two, just as soon as we